Moving to the next topic, which is IAM policy and what is the IAM policy? So let's try to understand the IAM policy first. So let's assume there is a user and for that user, I'm just going to create an IAM policy. So in a very simple manner, if I would try to explain the IAM policy, then this is a permission document. And what do you mean by the permission document? So let's assume that myself, Rahul, I'm trying to access or I'm trying to create an AWS account. But once I create an AWS account, then I don't have any permission to perform any actions or use any services inside my AWS account. And don't assume that I am a root user. So there is a disclaimer. I would like to put it over here. I am an AWS user, but I am not a root user. So that's the first scenario you should keep in mind because a root user have a permission to use all the services. So I'm not a root user, but I'm just a normal AWS user uh, present inside my AWS account. Okay, so I'm a user by default. I don't have any permission to use any of the services. So for that, we need to create a permission document and that permission document is called as as a IAM policy document. And that's where we call it as a IAM policy as well. So this is a user and for that user, I'm just creating an IAM policy document and that policy uh, dictates like what kind of a services that user can use and perform. So here, this is an example which I'm showing to you. And this IAM policy permits that particular user to access the S3 bucket. And once we assign this permission or this IAM policy to that particular user, then that user will be able to access the S3 bucket. So that's the significance of our IAM policy within the AWS. Now you understand what the IAM policy is and what's the purpose of it. Let's take a look on to one of the example policy which I just shown to you. So here you can see this is the snippet which I have taken from my IAM policy. And here you can see this is the syntax which you need to follow to create any IAM permission policies. So the first thing is the version which you need to keep as it is. The second is the statement. This statement block can be small and can be very long based on the policy which you're trying to implement. But I'm just keeping the things simple over here and I'm just trying to create a permission policy for my S3 bucket. So here you can see this is the SID and this is the SID where you can keep some suitable name like allow Rahul to S3. So these kind of some suitable name which you can keep it into your SID. Effect, would you like to allow or deny? So these are the two values which you can put inside your effect um, uh, variable second is the action so action like what kind of an action are you allowing or what kind of an action are you uh, uh, are you denying for that particular policy so here you can see i'm just trying to allow an s3 access and what are the resources so if you are just trying to uh, govern this particular policy to particular resource then you are just going to put that resource uh, arn arn is just a unique number for any resource so assume that you have created an S3 bucket and that S3 bucket you want to assign to me, then in that case, I'm just going to, you're just going to create this kind of a policy for that particular user. But this policy is very basic and very simple. Here we are just allowing all the S3 bucket and all the S3 permission. What do you mean by all the S3 permission? Which means he a user can create S3 bucket, can delete S3 bucket, can even access the content of your S3 bucket. So this star uh, signifies that thing. And resources uh, star means all the S3 bucket. I'm just not restricting that user to any particular S3 bucket. I'm just allowing all the S3 bucket access to that particular user. So this is a very simple uh, IAM policy, which I just wanted to explain you before moving further. Uh, let's do some kind of a demo so that we can understand this IAM user and IAM policy in much more detail. So this is my AWS console. And here in the search box, I'm just going to search for a services which is called as IAM. And here, just click on IAM over here. And as you have, uh, as I have told you that I am a root user and I'm not uh, supposed to use root account or root user quite a lot. So for that purpose, I'm just going to create an I am user. So here in the I am dashboard on the left hand side, you will find an option for creating a user. So just click on it. And what I'm just trying to showcase to you is that I'm just going to create an I am user and that user, I'm just going to allow some permission. And that permission is going to be our S3 permission, which I have just shown to you.
in the previous uh, chapter. Okay, so here uh, what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to create a user first. So let's go here and username. I'm just going to put uh, test, uh, let's say test user uh, demo. And then I'm just going to put provide user access uh, to AWS console. So let's put yes. Uh, or maybe we can just skip as of now we can just enable this option later also so that user have access to aws console as well but let's just create a user first so click on next over here and uh, here are a couple of things so add user to a group i'm just going to cover the uh, aws group later so i'm just not going to select that one uh, copy permission attach policy directly so what we can do we can just click on attach policies directly over here so here either what you can do you can just uh, go over here and you can just select some default policies otherwise we can also create some of our custom policies as well so let's take a look on to the default policy which has been provided by aws so here you can see there is a policy called s3 and here you can see amazon s3 full access so just select this one and if i expand this one then here you can see all the permissions for our s3 okay so for this particular user uh, which is our test user uh, which i have mentioned in the step one over here i am allowing the s3 full permission okay then click on next over here and here you can see this is our username and the console type i'm not providing any aws console access yet we are just going to enable it later and here the permission i'm just allowing the full s3 permission to that particular user okay then click on create user over here and here you can see our test user demo has been created okay so this is the successful message over here so once you create that user then just click on this particular user over here and go inside this uh, uh, home page of that particular test demo user okay now once you have created this particular user the next thing is how to access the aws console of that particular user since we have not enabled that option when we are creating this particular user okay so here in the uh, test demo user section you will find an option for a security credential and here you will find a link through which you can access your uh, AWS console of that particular test user. Okay. And here you will find an option for a enable console access. So first of all, you need to enable that console access so that you can just use this URL to access that particular console. So go over here, click on enable console and click on enable over here. And once you enable the console, then of course uh, you will need a username and password. Okay, so here uh, what you can do, you can just uh, rely on auto generated password. So this is the actual practice because you will be allowing some new user or you will be creating some new user from your, for your AWS account. So in that case, you will keep an auto generated password and you will check that option that user must create a new password after the next sign in. So suppose if you are onboarding a new user, then what you will do, you will just create an auto generated password and you will give him an option to change the password uh, at their first login okay but since i'm just doing this demo so i'm not gonna choose this option i'm just gonna stick with auto generated password but just keep in mind if you want to uh, allow that option then he will be able to set his or her own custom password okay i'm just gonna uh, deselect that one click on apply and here this is the password uh, so i'm just gonna copy this password and i'll just go on to my notepad uh, i am i'm not showing that notepad to you it is open on to my another screen so here i'm just gonna copy the console link also because that will be needed to access that particular console of our test demo user okay and copy that username as well so that i can just copy and paste the things uh, so that will be test user demo i'm just copying on my notepad okay just close this one okay and here i just since i have already logged in into my browser so i need to open a one incognito mode so that i can go there and log in so i'm just going to open into incognito mode over here and in this incognito mode i'm just going to copy that uh, url which i copied for my test user so this is the login console of that particular test user and here i need to enter the username so i'm just going to copy the username and uh, the password so which is i have already copied onto my notepad i'm just going to paste it over here and click on sign in 
And here you can see I am able to access the AWS console of my test user account. Okay, so just uh, uh, these are just some initial uh, helping notes. But anyway, uh, the thought is like you should be able to create a user which is an IAM user, and this IAM user is just with the name test demo, test user demo. Okay, and which you can find the details over here, you, which you can see. This is the user uh, IAM user which we have just created. But as I said you earlier that this particular user uh, will not have permission to perform all of the action which a root user can do. Okay, but when we were creating this user, so we have created an uh, S3 permission for it. So let's check whether this user is able to access that S3 bucket or not. So in the search box, type S3 over here, go to S3. And here you can see we are able to access the S3. And these are some S3 bucket which I have created from my root account. So I'm able to access all of these. Okay. And even I can access the content of those S3 bucket here as well. So here you can see the content of my S3 bucket. All right. So this is the way you can uh, create a user and even you can assign the permission what a user can do from that permissions all right so now we have seen like how to create a user how to assign a permission so let's take a look by removing that particular permission so what i'm just gonna do i'm just gonna uh, move this browser somewhere as, uh, onto different screen and here i'm again onto my root user account which you can see this is the rahul.wav which is my root user account and here this is the test user demo where uh, i have just shown to you so go to permissions over here and select this S3 permission and just click on remove and remove the policy. Okay, so now you can see I have removed that per particular permission. Okay, and now again go back to our AWS console uh, and this is again now test user which you can see. And now what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to just simply do the refresh. And here you can see insufficient permission to list the object. So as soon as I remove that permission, then user is not uh, able to access those S3 buckets anymore. So that's the power of your IAM uh, user and IAM policy. So it dictates like what kind of a policy you can create and what kind of a policy permission you can assign to that particular IAM user.